folks, now we're heading to the portion of the show where we are going to talk about something special. So you know what comes in now? It is, you know what? All right, we're talking about the blog. It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, folks. Um, let me tell you, I know everybody knows what's going on right now with the Donald and what the Donald has said. Everybody knows. The question is, what do we do about it? The question is, do we do anything about it? The question is, are we even surprised about it? The answer is an absolute no. So uh, earlier today, uh, you know, before we changed the show and had uh, Tim Danahy, Danahy on, I wanted to start thinking about what am I going to, what's, what's the blog of the week going to be about today? And I actually got upset because after listening to what Trump had to say, the first thing was, look, I have family members who voted for Trump. I have friends who voted for Trump. I had loved ones who voted for Trump. All along, we knew who Trump was. They had to have known who Trump was. But something within their psyche allowed them to do so. So to my friends and family who supported Donald Trump, my question to you is, that's the title of the blog, enough yet? Have you got enough yet? Look, I am ashamed to say I have family and friends who voted for Donald Trump. Why am I embarrassed? Shouldn't be me. You would think it should be them. But because they are still family. They are still friends of mine. And I genuinely, I honestly, I genuinely feel sorry for these people. They are family and friends. And for those of, for my friends who are listening, who voted for Trump, this sorry is not a sorry of pity. This is a sorry that says, my God, folks, wake up. My God, folks, you're harming your people. And your people, I mean just about every darn American. Donald Trump supporters who continue to apologize or make excuses for him fall into only two categories. The question is, which one do you reside in now? Because if you're still supporting him, there's only two, only two categories. The first category is merely those who believe in white nationalism and white supremacy. Those people yearn for a time when their white skin was an immediate path to privilege when competing for anything with all those others, those people of color. They do not attempt to hide their, connect or their, their, their correct belief, and it is a correct belief, that the founding fathers created this country a part of, for a particular gender and racial hierarchy. Liberalization is a threat to them because it created equ equity based on merit instead of a backward, immoral, irrational, and, and non-scientific race-based delineation. The second category is those that are in denial, those that are willfully ignorant. How can anyone of color or any religion or any woman for that matter or anyone from any, whether Christian or, I mean, Christian or otherwise, how can they support Donald Trump? Now think about it. And this isn't a negative thing. It is about, if, for those things that you believe, how does Donald Trump become your representative? The president, the president telegraphed who he was for decades. It was the most unhidden secret. Many Americans, including friends and family, chose to apply some facade of undeserved genuineness. They chose party over morality. They decided their innate sexism was preferable to voting for a woman. Some are going to balk at that. No, it just couldn't have been Hillary because Hillary was so bad. Really? How much worse could she have been than the Donald? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They disregarded the hurt that would come to many of those they purport to love for their willful ignorance. You chose, many of you chose your willful ignorance and you don't, I can say this right now while we are here. I won't tell you this in your face. I won't be holding it against you when I see you at the coffee shop, when I see you at the store, where I, when I see you anywhere. I won't be holding this against you, I promise. 
you should hold it against yourself. I won't mention it per se. I won't attack you per se. Because that'll get us nowhere. But by God, you should be attacking yourself. You should be asking yourself, how could I have done this? How could I have done this to the people I love? How could I do have done this to the country I love? How could I make believe? How could I convince myself that somehow there was something good about a Donald Trump? Someone who's going to grab women by their pussies. How could I possibly think? How could I think somebody who could articulate that in that manner could be somehow the person I wanted representing me, representing the country elsewhere? What kind of hoops did you have to jump into? Those of you that are Christians, what kind of hoops did you have to jump into to believe that somehow this person had a better moral compass than a Hillary Clinton, than a Bert, than anybody else? How could you think that? What did you tell yourself to think that? Day after day, the embarrassment that is our president speaks. The president's latest comments referring to some non-majority white countries as shitholes and yearning for immigrants from the blue-eyed white blondes from the likes of Norway did not surprise me. It should not have surprised you either. It wasn't something that he had not said before. But will those black people and other people of color make him pay for his latest assault on them and their families? Will those in my family who this guy overtly called where they're from shitholes will they will they renege on this president will they i don't know will their pride stop them well you know there are times when you get to throw pride out the window unfortunately for many the answer is yet unknown the president paraded a group of black apologists on stage with him for a disingenuous Martin Luther King special to address the 50th anniversary of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. Sadly, many times in the history of the United States, the oppressed and maligned are used for their continued oppression and maligning. I repeat, many times in this country, the oppressed and the maligned are used for their continued oppression on and malignment. Remember a lot of the folks running the fields were those other slaves whipping slaves. It wasn't only the white master whipping the master. Remember the corporations today, your new masters, but this time it's not a master on race, but a master on class, a master on all the others that are not the top 20%, the masters of those, remember that. That is what happens. That is what happens. So, what are we to do? What are we to do? Keep talking to family and friends. Look, folks, I'm a talker. You need to be a talker. You can't give up. Plant seeds. Don't think that when you speak and you're gone, your thoughts are done. They're not. When you speak, and when you speak with a certain level of honesty, authority, and integrity, people have a tendency to listen, even if they're not accepting you right then and there. They're listening. Plant the seeds so that when the time comes, everything else would become fertilizer, water, and sun for that seed to grow. I've seen it happen. I see it happen continuously so yes in as much as many of my left counterparts tell me Egberta you're wasting your time doing some of these things I'm like hell no working with humanity is never a waste of time trying to change people to go into a positive direction is never a waste of time so keep talking to family and friends you won't get it to all but you will reach some you may even consent convince enough to make the difference in several precincts and districts. You know, that's a magical thing, right? You want to hit precincts, you want to hit districts. That change alone can swing elections. You know, 
if Hillary Clinton had gone into a few precincts in Michigan, if Hillary Clinton had gone into a few precincts in Pennsylvania, if Hillary Clinton had gone into a few precincts, at least in the Haitian precincts in Florida, she would have won. Think about it. Even, even Trump went into Haitian precincts. He's talking about Haitians coming or living in a shithole. But guess what? He was in the Haitian precinct saying, give me your vote. I will be for you. And of course, he turned on them. But we knew he would. Shouldn't they have known he would? If the news media was out there, if independent media was out there, they would tell, they would have been able to inform these people that he would tell you anything for your vote, up and beyond, above and beyond what normal politicians do. They would have told him that. So, that could swing elections. Your voice could swing an election. Think about it. You have that power by just talking, by just keeping engaged. You could do it. As such, or rather, the Republican Party has been complicit with Donald Trump. They are complicit with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is going to go down and so will and should the Republican Party. The question is whether a Democratic Party or a progressive party will be ready to take the reins and run with it or they will simply become Republican light, a neoliberal disaster. We got to decide that. And you know who decides that? You do. These primaries that are coming up in Texas in March, you decide which candidates are going to be carrying the progressive mantra or the neoliberal mantra. You want the progressive mantra. You're the one who are going to decide. The Republican Party is complicit with Donald Trump. Guess what we're hearing now? Radio silence. The leaders are not talking on any major station other than Fox News. And those that are talking on Fox News are trying to say, well, liberals do the same thing. We can't have it from the leadership that way. But remember, all they want, the leadership of the Republican Party and the Republicans, all they want is President Trump's right hand to sign bills. They just want those bills that are there to pill for the American people. Pill for them. Take it away. And why do they want to take it away? I mean, it's, there's no fun in just taking things away for the sake of it because they're ba the, the, the people that they intend to enrich are those that are funding them. And it's time for payment. They've been funding them for years. They've taken over Congress. They couldn't get their bills passed. They've taken over the, the presidency. They couldn't get their bills passed. Now they have it all three. Well, it's more than all three. They have all four branches. Do you say, Brother, there's not four branches. There are only three branches. You're right. But I always call the, the Congress, you know. But anyhow, the judiciary, he is making an impactful change, which means we will need to have a strong legislature so that whenever a faulty judiciary makes a law unconstitutional, that we can follow the Constitution and force the law through with the necessary legislative steps. This is another subject that I won't go into. That talks into constitutional politics, and we don't need to get there right now. Right now, we're on Trump. So, folks, so folks, as such, in 2018, 2018 must be explosive. When I say 2018 must be explosive, that's exactly what I mean. 2018 must be be very explosive and what i mean by that is 2018 progressives must not just win progressives must win in a landslide and why must they win in a landslide because you don't want a 50 plus one government when some of those supposedly progressive establishment democrats will be there to fail you because the same companies that control those strong Republicans that are screwing you are the same companies that control the establishment neoliberal Democrats. Remember that. So don't think it's a panacea to just get rid of evil, the evil portion of the Republican Party that's screwing us all because they had some help. 
Remember that. They had some help. So as such in 2018, 2018 must be explosive. Progressives must win from city councils, county commissioners, the state houses, the senates, the big enchilada, the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House. And eventually in 2020, a real progressive president in 2020, but not one named Oprah Winfrey as a f another United States fad. We need a we need a technocrat that is charismatic, that knows policy, that understands economies, and won't be snowed by those who would tell them that the current capitalist structure that we have in America today is sustainable because evidence-based, this is no question, evidence-based, mathematically based, the exact things that the type of capitalism, the type of economy that we've instituted in this country, the, the exact things that's been predicted to happen because of the mathematical formulas that governs it, is exactly happening now. What we need is a complete restructure of the American economy into a free enterprise system. Not a corporatist capitalist system, but a free enterprise system. And we only get that, we only get that when we elect the right people from the bottom all the way up to the top. Don't be fooled by those people who come to you now. Oh, that they're going to do all that is right for you. But anyhow, folks, continuing to end the blog of the week, it will be hard. But forgive those that have put the country in dire straits that we are in now. Forgive them. It makes no sense sticking the knife in and adding salt to the wound. Makes you feel good for a couple of minutes and then it's all over. Makes them feel bad for their life for a very long time because they know they've screwed up. Look, these people that chose to be willfully ignorant, they know who they are and they know that they are. You don't have to tell them anymore. What you want to do is bring them into the fold without repercussions. So don't bother rubbing it in. If we are to repair the decimation that the Republican Party and some corporatist Democrats have rendered on the American populace, our time is better spent uniting and reversing the evil. Again, like I said, it makes you feel good. It'll make you feel great to tell these people, mm -mm, you screwed up, you messed up. You caused the country pain. You caused the death of many people because that is also on your hand. The blood of many people are on your hands. The death through sickness, the death through policy is on your hands. But you'll have to live with that. I don't have to, I don't have to rub it in any further. I'm just talking to everybody here with the expectation that when they go out there, they don't have to do what I'm doing here. It's over. Just go ahead, continue to talk to folks, continue to bring them in. Because if you continue to bring these people in, we will eventually make a change. You see, I preach all of the times that, um, I preach all the times that we are being played. And that these guys, from starting with the Powell Manifesto, and you always will continue to hear me saying the Powell Manifesto, and you can go to EgbertoWillies.com and look up the Powell Manifesto. And the reason I'm saying I always use it, and the reason I repeat that is the way radio is, it's a transient, and people come and they go as they're listening to your show. They listen to a part, and then they leave, and then they come back. Sometimes they return. So you get a whole lot of people. I mean, right now we have over 3,000 people. You get a... You get a Actually, it's quite a bit more than 3,000 people, but you get, you get people coming and going all the times. So, you, so sometimes if it seems repetitious for those who happen to sit through the entire hour, uh, you know why. Actually, we're at 5.5 thousand people. But anyhow, what's important that you do, what is very important that you do, is that you give people the opportunity to change. 
if you give them the opportunity to change, you know what? A large percentage will change. Remember the two categories I spoke about in the blog of the week. The first category are the white nationalists, the racists, the ones who just simply think that uh, America should be a white country controlled by white people. And a lot of people think that way. And for those who think that way, well, you know what? Uh, eventually you'll die. And uh, most of the folks that are coming behind you, not all, but most of them, they'll think differently. So as my nephew once told me, uh, he came here to, the, to Houston from San Diego one time. Brandon said to me, he said, uh, you know, Tio, a lot of us, he's young. He said, a lot of us don't worry about that anymore. He said, the way we see it all of the time is you guys are going to die off. <laughs> I said, okay. I mean, he was quite serious when he said that. You know, he said, oh, you guys are going to die off. Unfortunately, a lot of what's going on right now is a re-indoctrination of the youth, some of the youth. And uh, for those who like to say things like, well, uh, a lot of the Trump problem is racist and has nothing to do with the economy, I beg to differ. This black man begs to differ that it some parts of it is race but do not discount what economic angst can do to affect or bring back the carnality of racial issues until people realize that so i i hear all the liberal pundits on tv and um, my my good my, my friend uh, sometimes uh, also uh I, I, I get concerned when Joanne Reed uh, does it a whole lot, when she just claims solely, well, it's just a racial issue with these people and let's not spend any time trying to change these people because they can't change. It's not just a racial issue. You create economic angst and then you can put the racial wedge in to divide. Remember that when things are going great, for everybody, it is harder to put that wedge in because of the stupidity that is racial divides. Because of the silliness when one takes into account true, the, the, the reality of humanity. It is, re, it is simply silly. So folks, uh, we're coming into the end of the show. And I just want to let you all know that uh, this has been our first week of politics done right on a daily basis. So of course, it goes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. We do it right here in the studio. And on Thursdays at 3 o'clock, we're in the studios at KPFT 90.1 FM in Houston, Texas. On Fridays, we're back here. Uh, the goal of this show is going to be to bring in personalities from all over, mostly politics. Every so often, we will do more than politics. Hell, sometimes, who knows, maybe I'll throw in something that has to do with food. I love to eat good food. But the whole goal is to keep us informed and to provide us with a whole lot of uh, narratives that you won't necessarily hear on the mainstream, at, on mainstream media. Uh, our goal as well is for you to ask you to go ahead and share these, these programs widely. We need you to share these programs. And why do we need you to share these programs? Because you are going to be the media. What's happening in this country is not, it's, it's by design. Its intent is to keep you dumb. Its intent is to keep you ignorant. Its intent is to keep you knowing just enough to survive what the plutocracy wants you to do. And what we want to do with this type of a show is educate. So please do remember to share these shows. Lastly, and this is one of the most uh, important parts, uh, we need you to contribute to these shows, not only mine, but others. And you have the link underneath there that you can support Politics Done Right and uh, as well as EgbertoWillis.com, our news uh, website, as well and, and all of that covers uh, PoliticsDoneRight.com, TheLiberalNetwork.com, SinglePairHealthCareNow.com, and of course PoliticsDoneRight.com. Why? Because if it's not you, who? If it's not you, who does it? One thing on the right is the right is very, very, very good at ensuring they have support. And they don't have to get support from their masses. They get support from the big ones. We get support 
from the masses. There was a time when we could do most of our support on advertising, which means you browse and, you know, because you're displaying ads, you can, the, the person who's doing the stories, the person who's writing, all these, these guys are able to go ahead and get things done. Not anymore. Facebook has changed your algorithm. Uh, they have reduced the amount that these folks are trying to uh, provide, that the plutocracy is given for advertising. I wonder why that is occurring. Sometimes you wonder, right? Is it that they want the independent media out of business because they believe that you won't support these shows? That's a good possibility. Starve, starve the ads, and guess what you do? You starve the ads, you starve the ability for those who want to give you alternate, alternative news to survive. It's all there for one to see. So anyhow, what we are doing uh, with Politics Done Right is going on dual model. We still do. We, we still try to do our advertising, but we also ask people for uh, to go ahead and get their membership at Politics Done Right slash support. Guess what, though? Whenever you become a member of Politics, well, at .com, you actually browse our website without any ads. So check it out when you get a chance. But anyhow, folks, next week we should start taking phone calls i ha bought all the equipment that's necessary to bring the phones in we are going to try to get some of the crashing issues that we've been having with the uh, computer system with the new wirecast out and when we're done with that we'll be taking your calls and we hope to take a lot of calls because that is how we're going to make the change it's not going to be a one to many it's going to be a one to many a many to one and when we have folks in here a many to some so I hope you enjoyed the show. Keep telling me what you want us to do in the uh, ad sec in the uh, comment section of the um, the comment section of the live broadcast on Facebook, or drop us a line info at politicsdoneright.com or info at egbertowillies.com. I hope you enjoyed the show. We are going to be closing this baby out right now. Come back.